Before you go and buy an EQ plugin, it's really worth learning how to use the Studio One Pro EQ before you part with your money, because it may just have everything that you need. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Let's get started with the basic operations. Pro EQ2 is a five band EQ. Let's turn each of them on now. One, two, three, four, five. And as you can see, they're all color coded. Now you can either control these frequency bands with the controls at the bottom here, or you can go to the display at the top and use your mouse to control them. So for example, we could grab this frequency range here, and if we want to boost it, we could move it up here. And if we want to attenuate it or reduce it, we can move it downwards here. Likewise, at the bottom, we could use the gain control to do the same thing, okay? Now, if we want to change the actual frequencies that we're changing, we can drag it from left to right like so. We can also adjust that at the bottom with the frequency control here. And finally, we can adjust the Q. Now, as you look at the curve here, you can see that we're not just adjusting one frequency, but we're also affecting the other frequencies around it. And that's what this curve is showing. That area of influence, if you like, can be changed by adjusting the Q. Now we can do that with our mouse by using the scroll wheel on our mouse at the top here. So I'm adjusting that Q here, or we can use the Q control down here and make the same adjustments there. So that's essentially how we adjust EQ, uh, our EQ with those five bands. Now I just wanna point out something specific about the low frequency bands and the high frequency bands, because with these bands, we can actually change the nature of the curve. So for example, with this low frequency band, at the moment it's set to peaking, which is, same, is the same as the other frequency bands. But we can also change this to something called a shelf. Now we can see here that we're actually boosting the frequencies as we move further down here, but the point where we're adjusting, there's not so much of a boost. So this is a very different way of adjusting compared to the way we were adjusting before. Now we can change the kind of uh, the steepness of that slope by changing the shelf options down here. Okay, so there's a much steeper slope here. And if we go to this 24 decibel one, that's the steepest slope, okay? So low frequency shelves are reasonably common and I often use high frequency shelves. So if we go to the high frequency uh, node up here or frequency control, you can see that we can change. It's already on a shelf at the moment or move it back so we can see it a bit more clearly. We can either have it as a regular node as we had it before with the other ones, or we can change it to a shelf. And again, we can change the steepness of the curve for that shelf. It's very common for us to want to either cut the very high frequencies or the very low frequencies from a signal when we're using EQ. So Pro EQ2 has both a low cut and a high cut filter. Now, just to save any confusion here, in some other plugins, these will be called a high pass and a low pass filter, okay? These terms are interchangeable. They actually mean the same thing. So a low cut filter is the same as a high pass filter and a high cut filter is the same as a low pass filter, okay? Just in case you were confused about that, they definitely are the same thing. So here in Pro EQ on the right hand side, I'm gonna turn on the high cut filter. And you can see we've got a little bit of a curve happening there in the display at the top. Let's just adjust the frequency range for this. I'll move it back. So here it's beginning to cut off at around about two kilohertz. You can see the numbers here. And then it's tailing all the way off to nothing there at the edge of our frequency range, okay? So this is a nice way of gently removing some very high frequencies. We can control how gentle or how aggressive that is with this drop down menu here where we can change the shape of the slope there. Okay. So very simple to use and often very effective. Likewise, if we want to do a low cut, if we want to get rid of some of the muddiness at the bottom of a signal, we can use our low cut filter. Okay. I've turned it on there. You can see the slope has appeared. And just as we did with the high cut filter, we can change uh, how steep that slope is there by adjusting with this drop down menu here. Now, sometimes what happens when we're making EQ adjustments is we have something called phase shifts, which occur. 
I don't want to go into the details of how and why that occurs and what exactly it is at the moment, but I just want you to be aware of it. It can result in some anomalies in the sound. Things can sound a little unnatural, a little weird. Now, that naturally does happen a lot of time with EQs. And what they've done with this EQ, with the low cut end of things here, is they've given you another filter, right? This is, if we hover over it, you can see it's called the phase linear low cut. Now, if we want to use that one, um, we don't have quite as many controls over it, okay? That's because the algorithm's a lot more complex. Um, it's going to use a lot more sort of CPU to do this but it will help if you're getting phase issues in the low end of the EQ there. So mostly what we're going to talk about now relates to the visual nature of this plugin and it involves all the controls at the top here. So the first one here, band controls, simply switches off the bottom half of the plugin. Okay, so we'll click that now and you can see all of those bottom controls have disappeared. That's useful in case you don't have much screen real estate and you just want to be able to quickly go in and adjust bands here, for example, like so. You don't feel you need those. That's fine. I'll switch it back on. I like to see them all there. The next one here, range, level range, relates to how much of the range we're seeing visually in a vertical direction. Okay, so at the moment, I can grab one of these nodes, drag it all the way up to the top, and I'm going to be able to move it a full 24 decibels. Okay. But say I've only moved it a little bit here and I change the range here. Let's change it to six decibels. You'll see that the curves are more extreme. Now, nothing's actually changed in terms of sound here. I want to make sure you understand that. Okay, this is just a visual change. So perhaps if you're generally working, say, within a six decibel range and you want to have really fine control over what you're doing, that could be a useful control. But for me, I don't generally look for that fine a control so 24 would be fine for me now the next button here curves is actually quite interesting it's worth understanding that as we're adjusting a frequency range say like this one here and then we adjust another one like this one here because they both have relatively wide Q values, they're intersecting each other. So they're actually affecting each other's curve, okay? Now that is represented, or the net result, the end result of that is represented by this white line running through here, okay? So that's the end result of those two interacting with each other. You may not want to see that all the time, in which case you can click on the curves button here and you're just going to see the white line, the end result. You can still see the uh, actual curve of a specific frequency when you hover over it and you adjust it. OK, so you can still see what uh, effect your Q value is having there, um, but you don't need to have that switched on all the time. I don't mind having it switched on. It looks fine to me. Um, so I'll just leave that on. The next one uh, changes the nature of the sort of display which is happening in the background here, okay. At the moment, it's set to 12th octave. So each of these bars, which you can see moving up and down here, okay, shows you the frequency gain of that specific frequency and it relates it here to a note on a piano keyboard okay this could probably be useful when you're searching for sort of fundamentals and things like that um, i can't say i use it often but it is there if you want to use it more commonly we may use something called the third octave here so this is where um, the each bar represents a third of an octave in range there okay um, then we have this FFT curve. I'm not sure what FFT stands for, but essentially you can see uh, the curve which is appearing there. And then finally, we have this waterfall display, which I never ever use, but you may love it. And this is more like a time based display. So starting at the bottom, we can see the current time, we see in the history move up there. And it's just showing the amount of energy, if you like, within that frequency range at that point in time. I like to use this either on the 12th or the 3rd octave, so I'll switch it to 3rd octave at the moment. I'm going to skip this one here. We'll come back to that one in the next section. But finally, I just want to mention this is not to do with the display, but this high quality button turns oversampling on and off. So oversampling um, it really increases the quality of the processing which is happening with plugins, but it does use a lot more processing power. So if you've got limited resources, you're running out of processing power, etc., 
then you may want to switch that off. I think most of the time for most modern computers, you're fine to have that switched on all the time. Often with different instruments in our recordings, they can occupy similar frequency ranges. And when that happens, something called masking can occur. It's essentially where one instrument effectively cancels out the other and you don't get really separation in the mix. So often we're using EQs to create that separation by carving out particular frequency ranges for particular instruments. But in order to do that effectively, it's handy to know what's going on with the other instrument. Now I have the EQ applied to an acoustic guitar at the moment, but I want to see how it's interacting with the bass guitar, because I know that some of those low frequencies are gonna be shared between the two instruments. So at the top of the Pro EQ here, I'm gonna go up to where it says sidechain, and on that little control next to it, I'm just gonna click on that to choose a source. I'll click on that. It shows all of the other tracks, in my particular song, and I'm gonna choose bass here, the bass guitar. So I'll click on that, and immediately you see that the display changes. We've gone to an FFT curve. The blue line is representing the acoustic guitar, and the purple line is representing the bass guitar, okay? Now, we can see that there's a reasonable amount of crossover here in that low end. I probably don't need all of that low end in the acoustic guitar. Now, it is helpful if we can kind of have this freeze if you like. So what I'm going to do is go up to this control up here, which is to have it um, hold on the peaks. Okay, so I'll switch that on. We'll let it play for a little while. It's doing a peak hold there and I can kind of see where it's been if you like. So there's definitely a big crossover here, particularly below around about 250 hertz or, or so. Now I would never use, do this entirely visually like this. I would do it with sound. This is just for demonstration purposes. But this may help me to decide that I should do a low cut for this guitar, okay? So I may uh, switch on the low cut control and start to adjust this and probably adjust the, the slope here um, to really get rid of these frequencies, which are probably not necessary at this point in the song for the acoustic guitar. And this is going to help the bass to shine, and it's just going to get rid of all the muddiness that may be down there. One of the great thing about using a lot of the stock plugins which come with Studio One is we can get quick access to them without having to open the whole plugin. So I've got the Pro EQ plugin, as you can see here, applied to my guitar. I'm actually just going to close the display here and we'll go over to the acoustic guitar track that's applied to at the bottom here. You can see the Pro EQ plugin there. If we go down to the, if we go to the little arrow there and click on it, we can then go and click on expand and you can see that we have a little display there of our current EQ curve. And the great news is you can actually go in right here and make some adjustments. Probably not fine adjustments, but if you just want to do something really really quickly there it's really handy to have that available and you've got those you can adjust things like the Q, for example but with the mouse here just by using the scroll wheel on your mouse and drag these things around etc add new nodes in there all of that kind of good stuff so handy to know and very very useful you know one of the things you may be eqing is drums but you may not know how to really put together a drum beat in studio one check out this video here where i reveal the method that i use which i've developed over years and is suitable for beginners and experts alike go on click on that thumbnail Thank you.